Hi, I'd like to talk about the novel Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This can be a challenging read because Virginia Woolf is kind of a sneaky writer. She uses stream of consciousness writing. That is to say, we as the reader are taken in and out of a wide variety of perspectives and we even move in and out of time as people remember things from the past. In fact, the novel takes place in one day in the life of Mrs. Clarissa Dalloway, wife to Richard Dalloway, a sort of kind of important person. Important enough to where the Prime Minister of England will show up to a party at their home. On the superficial level, the Dalloways appear to have everything. Money, status, social acceptance, education, the whole ball of wax. But of course, things are always more complicated when you lift up the carpet and you look underneath at some of the dirt. What Virginia Woolf is doing here is showing us life through many different perspectives, reflecting, shall we say, the modernist interest in the subjective experience. There is no objective point of view, so much as it is a wide variety of subjective points of view. There are two primary characters who actually never meet. Clarissa Dalloway, the hostess with the mostest, and Septimus Smith, a World War I veteran suffering from what nowadays we call PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Septimus is a difficult character because his subjective experience is almost automatically, we assume, erroneous, flawed. He thinks things are going on in the world that most people will not say are going on in the world. But he's had a life experience. He's had a very difficult experience. And he's having a hard time recovering. It's interesting to talk about Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. It captures a lot of different themes, not just simply war and the post-war, right? The modernist interest in World War I and how life has been completely changed by that war, what they used to call the Great War. It's also interested in sexuality. There is same-sex attraction, interest in feminism, the role of women in the world, education, medicine. Quite a few of these, and they all connect ultimately to death as well. And I don't want to give away too much now if you haven't got all the way through the novel. But there's a lot of distrust. Let's just put it this way. The modernist writers, as I said in my handout on modernism, distrust a lot of the traditional institutions as a result of World War I and all the other things. Clarissa embodies almost all of these. Yet she's a sympathetic character, I think, in many ways. She's confined and restricted in her own ways. Now, most overtly critical of Clarissa is Peter Walsh, who, of course, is carrying the torch for her the whole time. She's married to Richard. She rejected Peter. Peter is an interesting character in his own right. He is the kind of man who society looks at as a failure. And he's very aware that he is looked at as a failure. It's part of what motivates what he says and does. Richard Dalloway, Clarissa's husband, is on the other hand a success. 
called upon and asked to be called upon by some of the most important people in England, as I said, including the Prime Minister. An associate, Hugh Whitbread, one little vowel away from white bread. He's an old friend of Clarissa, and he too represents, let's just say it, the proper way to do things, the proper way to be. On the other side, Septimus, the war veteran with significant psychological issues, is married to a young Italian girl, Lucrezia, who quite honestly is overwhelmed. She is a foreigner in England from Italy that makes, uh, well, Wolf plays with the North-South dynamic. I'm not talking about American North and South. Northern England, Southern, or Northern Europe, pardon me, and Southern Europe, where she comes from, family, emotion, affection. They may not have all the money, right? But there's this bond. And she's lost all of that by marrying Septimus and moving North to cold, cold. England. Another interesting female character who doesn't show up until late physically, but she's in the mind of Clarissa earlier, is Sally Seton. Sally is a young woman who kissed Clarissa. In what Clarissa remembers as basically the greatest moment of her life. Interesting to see what happens with Sally Seton. Septimus, to go back to him, he is, shall we say, the victim of the contemporary psychology and medicine of his time, as represented by two characters, Dr. Holmes and Sir William Bradshaw, who offer completely contradictory treatments and advice for Septimus, which way is he supposed to turn? Who knows? The experts don't know. And he doesn't trust them. Ultimately, though, this is Clarissa's story, right? Mrs. Dowley, the perfect hostess. A damning statement made once by Peter Walsh, intended to inflict harm and to suggest that she would never rise above being a perfect hostess. It is a comment that was hurtful, and she remembers the hurt. There are other characters. Evans, who was a comrade to Septimus in World War I, who was killed in the war. The event that most powerfully affected Septimus. Elizabeth, the only child, daughter of Richard and Clarissa. She's an important person, as of course many parents have difficulties raising young people, you know, teenagers, so on and so forth. Who she, Elizabeth, I mean, has developed an infatuation with. Miss Kilman, if you say that more slowly, it's kill man. Miss Kilman represents, again, pretty much everything that Clarissa Dalloway is not. And there is a great deal of hostility under the surface between Clarissa and Miss Kilman. And there's a suspicion that Elizabeth herself has an infatuation with Miss Kilman. I don't want to give too much of the plot away. Reading Mrs. Dalloway, though, is not really a great deal about plot. It's about experience and how different characters experience the world in different ways. And there's ultimately no right or wrong or truth and falsity. Right? 
It's what each character is going through. And one day in the life in post-war England.